The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome back, everyone, to the Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization Show, the home of Googleization Nation, where we talk with HR and business thought leaders about the crazy, never normal shift going on all around us. Our goal is to bring you ways to reimagine tomorrow and explore the ever changing convergence of people, business, and technology. Here is your host, Ira Wolf. Welcome back, everyone, to Geek Skeezers and Googleization Show. Thank you for being part of Googleization Nation. I'm Ira Wolf. If you think this is just another podcast, think again. This is the voice of the most important conversations on the future of work confronting business leaders and people today. Our goal is to bring you ways to reimagine tomorrow and explore the ever-changing convergence of business, technology, and people. In other words, my goal is to help you make sense of this messy, weird, unfamiliar, fascinating world that we seem to be careening toward. On today's show, you're in for a real treat. My guest is Carly Abramowitz. We met just a few years ago. She's the author of a brand new book, Dancing with Chaos, Three Steps to Break Free from Complexity, Move Toward Your Goals Faster, and Live Your Best Life. For anyone who's been listening to me for the past 25 years and seven years as host of Geek Skeezers and Googleization, you know my passion for helping others deal with the consequences of linear thinking in a world of exponential growth, thriving in a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. That was my topic of my TED Talk uh, almost eight years ago. Make change work for you. It was the theme of my book. Recruiting in the Age of Googleization, which came out in 2017 and a second edition in 2020. It's, it was a subject of hundreds of keynotes and presentations I made over the past 10 years. Well, as Carly's book title says, we need to dance with chaos. To show you how much Carly and I are in sync, I pulled this slide out of my archives. It's from my TED Talk. For those watching the episode, it's an image of me who watching, you can see that it's an image of me watch it, dancing with change. And for those who are listening, uh, I'll put it in the show notes, but now you have to get that image out of your head. Carly and I have so much to talk about. But be- before I bring her on, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Avanti. Avanti is at the forefront of making everywhere work work. Last week, I had the good fortune to participate in their 2024 Solutions Summit. It was an eye-opening, inspiring event. There were so many good people from different walks of life that I met there. It started with the release of the 2024 Everywhere Work Report, and then an incredible vision of the future as told by futurist Sam Rad, who, by the way, will be a guest on the show in just a few weeks. We participated in roundtables and discussions about the intersection of IT, cybersecurity, and HR. Right now, that intersection is a bit congested, and at times it's an accident waiting to happen with the function and safety of securing data colliding with the digital employee experience. Well, Avanti's at the forefront of making Everywhere Work, and you'll be hearing a lot more about Avanti and Everywhere Work in the weeks to come. Meanwhile, you can download the 2024 Everywhere Work Report by going to geekskeezers and googleization.com, wait for the pop-up, and then click on it, and I'll direct you to the site. Or you can go directly to avanti.com as well. Now, it's time to bring on Carly Abramowitz. From Boston to Paris, Carly's had always has danced to her own rhythmic beat. She's a graduate of Northwestern University, She's not just an innovator. She's a dynamic force of creativity and energy in a world of constant change. She's driven driven by depth, purpose, and an insatiable zest for life. 
She founded CA Consulting Group in 2005, and today it's an international firm that stands at the forefront of elevating leadership, sales, and communication training for global giants. We're going to talk a lot about that. Let's have a big Googleization Nation welcome for Carly Abramowitz. Hey, welcome, Carly. Thank you, Ira. Great to be here with you. And I'm completely jealous from, <laughs> I'm in Pennsylvania and you're in the Dominican Republic this week. So I am. I appreciate you carving some time out um, from your vacation. Well, well deserved, I'm sure. And, and really, well, we've had great weather here, but not probably as nice as down in, in uh, the Dominican. Yeah, it's uh, super tropical here. No surprises there. Yeah. And I'm here for about a week with my family before heading back to Paris. So yeah, you're the, the world traveler. You commute back and forth between. I mean, you, you've been ahead of your time. Uh, like I, I've been remote since 2004. You've been commuting back and literally almost commuting back and forth between yeah. Miami and Paris and and exactly. worldwide. Um, well before we've been, we're talking about this world of everywhere work and remote work and hybrid work and, and doing it. So obviously it can work. Uh, and uh, the pandemic just pulled the curtain back on it. That COVID uh, pandemic pulled the curtain back on it. And here we are. Um, so, and a lot of people are, as I said, dancing with change. You're talking about dancing with chaos. So let's talk a little bit about how you got there. You know, where, where, where did that theme come from? What does that look like? And we certainly want to delve into uh, your three, uh, the three skills that you believe that we should uh, learn about, but our, our paths and our stories um, and our influences uh, certainly came from many similar places. So let's hear about yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Ira. So I, you know, when I founded CA Consulting Group in 2005, we were really quite focused on leadership and specifically leadership and communication during crisis. And if you kind of fast forward from 2005 to about 2015, 2016, and I do talk about this um, in the book in Dancing with Chaos, uh, all of a sudden there were so many simultaneous crises happening that uh, you know our clients, who are these you know big ginormous companies. I uh, started referring to these crises more as transformations. Um, and, you know, this was when I kind of took a step back and I said, well, all of these things that I had started to study, for example, at Singularity University and afterwards at Abundance 360, starting all that in 2011, I, you know, I anticipated starting to feel this speed of change and everything really get faster and faster. And so I started to see this directly with my own clients in about 2015, 2016. And we started talking about, you know, VUCA world. And this is a term I know you use it. We use it. A lot of different people use it. It's quite convenient to kind of sum up the, you know, chaos that that we have around yeah, us. It, it, it's almost a magical word, word when, you, when you talk about people don't know what VUCA is. When, but when you talk about, yeah, it's, it's volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. You got that's the world we live in. And it it, it, and it really encapsulates it for sure. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. So. Absolutely. You know, and like you, Ira, working with people and really, you know, trying to help people and empower people uh, to be able to reach their goals and achieve their ambitions and their dreams, you know, and starting really 2015, 2016, just watching so many of our clients at all different management levels kind of get sucked in to the chaos, you know, so that's originally where I got the idea, perhaps during the pandemic, I don't remember, you know, exactly um, when it came to me, but it was in me. And I just felt this real need um, to try and observe, you know, what was going on uh, around me, around so many people around me, uh, and really pinpoint, well, what are those fundamental mindsets? What are those fundamental skills? What are the fundamental practices that some people are doing and doing more of, um, and it seems to really be helping them to embrace the current 
you know, chaos, change, you know, and see all of this chaos as really opportunities. Because when you look at it that way, and I'm not saying, you know, doesn't feel that way for anybody all the time, obviously, but when you look at it that way, it's really quite exciting. There's so many things going on right now. There are so many open doors. You know, if your mindset is just attuned to kind of seeing them, and then if you kind of have the courage to engage uh, and move forward with it. So that's, you know, that's where the idea and the writing of the, the book came from. Yeah. And, and listening to you, you know, you started with talking about you were dealing with crisis management. And, and certainly that was a whole industry. And that was preparing people, uh, especially in large organizations, when when there was a crisis. And, and it could have been anywhere from a, um, a product that they offered, you know, going back 40 years, the J and J and Tylenol type thing. And, but those were like isolated incidents. And most people sort of took a step back and go, you know, we don't do anything that would be, that would require that, but everybody had those incidents and and, P, and then it became a PR management and, and, and public relations. How do you manage that story? But I, I was, it was, a, it just hit me today is like, well, why, well, my first thought was when you started to tell that story was, why didn't you call it dancing with crisis? And, <laughs> and, and the reality is, is there is almost a crisis. It seems for certain people and certain events and certain companies that the frequency of crises collapsed. It, exactly. And, and that's exactly. where we're moving. And it's like, okay, now, now, now I get it. Now I see the story. And that's really important because it, there's so many instances that people just think that the, the 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 pandemic was a one off. It's mm -hmm. like I'm not going to live another hundred years. It happens every hundred years. We got through it. Look where we are. We're we're, we're back. We're we're still trying to get back to normal. But the normal we face now, those time frames of normal, are 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 on top of one another. And and you mentioned this in the book, and you you phrased it in a way that I hadn't necessarily heard before, because in my book, in the recruiting in the age of globalization, I have a whole chapter on how do you explain exponential change? And it goes back to the old story that if I give you a penny today and you bring me back the penny tomorrow, and it, it, by, by doing that, I give you two pennies. And then on two days and three days, you, you got four pennies and on, it goes eight. And it's like, how many pennies do you have at the end of, of a month? And people, because for a long time, for the first 20 days, it's like, this is a lot of work for a little bit of money. Right. And then all of a sudden, Stop. it's worth five million dollars. <laughs> you know, boss can give, give away the, the storyline <laughs> at the end. But you talk about it in a different way, and you talk yeah. about the the knowledge doubling. Yeah, so can, yeah. Can you just share that because I, I think it we're we're looking for stories that people can find relatable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the, there's so much available to us. That's where you know this knowledge doubling curve it's it's clearly an exponential curve that's where that comes from and again this goes back to 2016 which was not kind of you know a, a mundane year let's say that was the year um that the amount of information the amount of data in the world doubled that year and since then um you know this doubling of data and this doubling also of the the knowledge curve has not stopped, um, you know, and there are a whole range of experts, you know, on the, the data side of things who say that, you know, from now until 2030, 30% uh, 30 of the data in the whole world will actually be created in real time. And, you know, you try and wrap your mind around that. It's a little bit conceptual. It's a little bit difficult uh, to grasp just how fast things are going. And so, you know, I think that that exponential curves, which was something I was initiated um, into with Singularity University, because they use that really a lot to help you understand the scale of change that's happening in the world. And when you really grasp that force, right, of the exponential change, which is something that we all felt, for example, during the pandemic, it's the same thing as your penny example, you know, one day, one person far away was sick. And two weeks later, you know, a few people 
closer, we're sick. And then the next day you couldn't leave your house, you know, at least for us in Paris, we didn't leave our apartments for two and a half months because everybody, <laughs> you know, was, was sick. And that's really kind of that force, like taking off in an airplane or a rocket um, of the exponential curve. And I think what's interesting for us, you know, as people, as human beings is to look at that and to realize, well, okay, we're not formatted. Our brains, our intellects are not formatted in that intellectual, in that exponential way. We're very linear. You know, we think about well, what am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing next week? What am I doing next month? Oh, right. Next year, you know, I can plan another vacation to the, we don't have really innately that capacity to understand scale at that change. And I think that really one of the most important starting points for anybody who's looking to achieve more, uh, to feel better, to feel more in sync. And I think that that word in sync is so super important today um, is to really start to just understand, well, okay, my brain isn't formatted to understand the scale of change. But if I understand the scale at which the world is changing, I'm going to have such an easier time navigating within that change. Ira, I think your mic. Yeah, no, I am muted. Thank you. Um, last night, uh, I had the opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm part of a regional uh, YMCA board, and yeah. and we're on. I'm on the task force uh, for future vision, and so we, we was leading the discussion and the conversation there. And from the prior session, we sort of get, people got in the weeds. There were things that they can fix, and they go, "Well, this is our five year plan, or this is our ten year building plan." And but they're still thinking linearly because we, it's like we well we have five years, but they're not projecting out what's the world going to be in five years. And just a few years ago, five or ten or twenty years from now, was pretty predictable. It it, it was a trend, and now it's dramatically changing. So just this morning, I was trying to I, I went back and I was trying to figure out how to explain this to them better. Because when I said, look back, think of yourself 20 years from now, look back, what's that world gonna, could be? And they go, well, it's so hard to predict the future. Well, so I, I took it in reverse. And I, I'm just going to quickly read a couple things that I pulled up here. So I, I looked at, and most people don't realize this. So if we go back to 2004, okay, the iPhone was not invented. We did not have an iPhone yet. So if we just look over those 20 years, actually, it came out in 2007. So if we look out over the last 17 years, how our lives have changed. Uh, first of all, in 2004, 90% of homes had landlines. You had phones. You, you, we had flip phones, but most people still had landlines. Um, the highest, get this, and, and again, the little techie stuff here, but the highest broadband speed. And I've often said this, had the pandemic occurred in 2012 or 2002, how the how we, it would have been so different because we would have not been able to work remotely. Because the broadband speed just 20 years ago, the maximum was three megabytes per second. Mm. It's now one gigabyte <laughs> per second, which most people have. Um, we had the, the most popular device was an MP3 player, like the iPad, iPod. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they stopped production of the iPod, which everybody had. PDAs, we all had these PDAs, so we had multiple devices. DVDs were popular, so was Blockbuster. <laughs> uh, you know, so we've moved to streaming, smartwatches, uh, VR. You know, we're talking about VR. Uh, we... We had digit. We had cameras. We used to go to Kodak to get the film processed. Um, now people don't even know what Kodak is. Uh, so there's there's all these, and this is only within the last twenty years. And that, exactly. and we can go back ten years. We can go back yeah. five years and say what were the th not just fads, but but devices that we relied on for a period of time and now have evolved. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, and the iPhone example is always, I, I think, such a relevant one because we feel like we've had this tech, you know, forever and ever and ever. We really haven't, you know, and you can also look at it and, and you were kind of speaking to this, 
you know, the, the computer power, the computational power that you have today in, you know, here's mine and your tiny little iPhone is 32,000 times more powerful than the computer that flew the Apollo to the moon right. it, in it, it 1969. Actually yeah, and, it actually you know, can control the, <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, and the so, scary and 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 I use these examples, and again, our, we, we, I'm sure we can go on all day. Uh, all day. <laughs> but our but, but the examples I use is I, I talk and and again, this seems so far out, and people don't even envision this. But and I know for the last five five to ten years, they've been talking. We're on the verge. We're one or two years away from quantum computing. But I there was a there was a calculation based on even the supercomputers that exist today. Mm. Um, so the supercomputers are a hundred million times faster than the fastest laptop that's available. Okay, so again, and go, okay, we don't need to know that, but that's actually what allowed artificial intelligence. That's mm -hmm. what allowed these large uh, language models to exist because now the speed is so quick that it can process other information. Otherwise you type something in the chat GPT and three or four years from now, we'd have a result. <laughs> oh, uh, now we can, it's just instant that it happens. Once we go on quantum computing, it's 178 million times faster than the fastest computer that exists today. And one day that switch is going to be flipped. Mm. And I know the date keeps getting pushed out and, and there's some challenges, but it's very soon. And that's definitely going to happen within the next 20 years. Some people say it's going to happen within the next 12 months. Yeah. When that gets flipped, that speed is just what kind happens. Of, it's right. going to compress. And I loved what this with what your doubling, the knowledge doubling is, mm -hmm. because I, I think what it said, what used to take decades or, or centuries to accumulate that, not that knowledge was down to 12 months. What yeah. we accumulate almost within in a um, on an annual basis was down or, 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 or it was uh, the amount of knowledge that it's created. Um, is what the world used to create in a lifetime and is now down to 12 months. And that is going to keep compressing. Yeah. You know? So you've come up with some, and there's two paths we want to go to. We want to talk about AQ uh, a little yeah. bit because that's where our paths cross and, and where that fits in. But you, your, your book is about three general areas, three skill yeah. sets that were developed. Um, Absolutely. Let's talk about those so we don't get too far into this and, and not I, get too those. far into all the the techie stuff. Yeah, no, I'm I'm totally with you on that, Ira. You know, I think the overall premise before kind of breaking down what are these big skill groups and you know how do they work, why are they important, so on and so forth. The big premise for me, you know, having worked in leadership development and sales development and just overall soft skills development for basically the past 30 years of my life. Um, the big thing for me is realizing that it is actually these skill sets that are going to give us, you, me, other people, some continuity and some stability, you know, and a, a feeling within ourselves of some notion of predictability, you know, and I think you did such a beautiful and pedagogical job of explaining, you know, what's going to happen when the quantum switch, you know, is, is switched. It's a really, really good question. And so it's so important to me, you know, seeing how people operate within companies, even within their personal lives, you know, how can we empower, how can we help by giving skills and kind of breaking them down into a way that's practicable, that's applicable, um, that people can really hang on to and feel like they have something, which was already a big concept, I think, you know, in, in today's world. And so in Dancing with Chaos, I break them down into feeling really rooted, like how do you get rooted? How do you get grounded? And I will, I'll come back to that right after. Uh, second skill set is all about now that you are rooted within yourself internally, because externally it's it's all movement and it's moving in all kinds of weirdo you know ways. Um, you know, once you're grounded and rooted, how do you really accelerate? Because it is important. I'm not saying to do things like a crazy frenetic person, but it is important today to know how to do things when you want to 
to know how to do them quickly and to be able to accelerate in this rhythm that we're all kind of feeling. And a lot of us are feeling kind of almost as if we're, we're getting this rhythm thrown onto us instead of really engaging in it and, and enjoying it. And then once you're engaged and you're accelerating, well, how do you then navigate? You know, how do you navigate in, in these new rules and this, you know, I think you use the term a lot, you know, never normal, new normal, you know, so on and so forth. How, how do you get your footing inside of yourself? How do you speed up a little bit when you want to? And then how do you make, the, you know, decisions that are going to help you reach your objectives, that are going to make you feel good, that are going to bring other people on board with you, you know, because our connections also with ourselves super important, but our connections with the other people around us. And I think this speaks to how we met, certainly Ira, you know, are, are just so super important within all of this tech and all the fancy quantum stuff and all of that, you know, it right. <laughs> comes down to how yeah, are you relating connection. to yourself and how are you relating to other people? Yeah, absolutely. So let's go back to what starting with the roots. <laughs> <laughs> let's start but. with the roots. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, I noticed again, this is, is kind of, these are things that I, I really, really picked up on from designing our programs and from, you know, kind of watching what was going on. Um, with CA Consulting Group, we have, you know, about 100 coaches in the world. We run a lot of these programs. And I noticed that people were still kind of looking for their footing and looking for that sense of security externally. Um, you know, the promotion of the job, the title, um, the diploma, you know, the size of your team, uh, the objective, the project, the deadline, so on and so forth. And since all of those things are so shaken up and they change so often, I thought it was really interesting to start to imagine how can you feel rooted, not by like your external accomplishments or external status and different factors, but how can you really find that groundedness inside of yourself? And so this comes down to things that, again, we know well also from AQ, uh, things like hope, um, other, you know, aspects like having close relationships, you know, when you feel really connected, you know, through your purpose, um, through your vision, when you can connect with other people, that just is a wonderful way to feel a sense of security um, and, and drive. How are you focusing what is your purpose? Um, all of these things are six specific skills uh, that I, you know, have put into the first part of feeling grounded. Um, and not, you know, people can start the book Dancing with Chaos wherever they want, really, you know, and I've set up this lovely AI bot genie who is there. Um, she can do a million different things. And one of the things that she does really, really well is help people get really clear um, on an objective or several objectives on what are the skills that are going to help you the most to achieve that objective and to achieve it in the way that you want to achieve it. Um, and so, you know, I would recommend to anybody listening, if you're curious, if you're interested, go talk with Jeannie, get clear, you know, on the skills that you would like to be working on. And if they're rooting skills or accelerating skills or navigating skills, it doesn't really matter so much so long as they're important and they make sense to you. Is there a list of, of specific skills? I mean, are, you know, that, that can be identified. So yeah. let, let me, so let me hold that question because I just looked at the clock. Um, we're going to take a really, really quick break. You're listening to Geek Skeezers and Googleization. We're having a phenomenal conversation with uh, Carly Abramowitz, uh, author of the new book, Dancing with Chaos. Uh, we're talking about the skills that are required to um, not just survive, but thrive uh, in, in, a, in a never normal world or whatever we want to call it uh, moving forward. Uh, we're going to take a really, really quick break. Uh, we will be back in one minute. And we're, when we come back, we're going to look at some of those specific skills uh, that people need to develop in order to be able to do this. Are your employees feeling stuck and just showing up for a paycheck? 
Is your workforce working harder to get back to normal than adapting to the future? It's time to help them break their addiction to certainty and develop a growth mindset. Developed by one of the world's top-rated future of work thought leaders, AQ Plus Mindset is a powerful tool to help your employees embrace change, adapt faster, and grow on the job. Conveniently delivered to any smartphone or laptop in easy-to-digest 5-10 to minute lessons. Managers can sit back and watch employee attitudes shift towards growth and innovation in just 30 days. Are you ready to help your employees thrive in this ever-changing, never-normal world? Encourage them to show more grit, resilience, adaptability, and unlock their potential? The journey to a growth-filled future starts with a growth mindset. Visit aqplusmindset.com or call 484-373-4300. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're speaking with Carly Abramowitz on today's episode of Geek Skeezers and Googleization. Uh, when we left, uh, we were talking about uh, Carly's the author of Dancing with Chaos, and we had just talked about being rooted. How do we find our roots? How do we get our foundation? How do we get our, our feet solid on the ground of where we're going? Uh, and But there were two other general skill sets. Uh, that we required that. So we want to cover that, but also dig in the weeds a little bit. What are some of those specific skills that people need to to develop? Yeah. So when we're talking about rooting skills, like what are the things that are really going to help you feel grounded? We're talking about things like hope, um, which goes back to what is your mental filter? How are you looking out on the world? Are you looking at at it as a world of opportunity, or are you just kind of seeing all the setbacks and the complexity and so on and so forth? So hope is the first skill that we work at in terms of getting grounded, getting rooted. There's courage, um, because all of this complexity and chaos, uh, it does really require some courage, uh, and that is certainly an important one to to keep working on. Uh, There's focus. Um, you know, your purpose, certainly, but what are you paying attention to? As I mentioned earlier, there's close relationships. And then the last two skills that we have with rooting are creativity, um, because things are, are moving so quickly. And this is really the chance to let your creativity shine and to really put that forward um, and to use that as one of your key skills. And then there's practice. Uh, which, you know, working in learning and development and leadership development and sales development all these years is certainly a subject that is so dear to my heart, um, you know, because practice, you know, the, the expression practice makes perfect, um, at least practice, you know, makes you really comfortable uh, and and starts to get you really good at the different skills. And it's important to look at that, you know, almost like training, like you're in a gym or like a dancer, which is course, the metaphor that I use throughout Dancing with Chaos, um, you know, dancer is still at that bar, you know, the best dancer in the world is still doing bar exercises, you know, every day. And that notion of practice and of deliberate practice is is so important. So those are the six uh, for uh, for getting rooted, getting grounded. So so let's move on to the other ones. Make sure yeah, we cover exactly. the other general areas. Because uh, again, and I, I want to be cautious of the time, but I also want to bring in where our cro- our paths cross because we talk yeah. about skills in a, in a model with the AQ as well. So let's move on to. So we've we're, we're now we've got our roots, we've got our foundations, we've developed those six skills, or we're we're working and practicing on those six skills. What's next? So once you're you're rooted, and again, this is an internal rooting, it's with yourself, even if you're connecting with other people, which is obviously the idea. And then we move on to, well, how do you accelerate um, in the chaos? And how do you kind of start moving more swiftly toward toward your different objectives? And we do that. There are, again, six skills. Uh, There are adaptability, which is one of our favorite shared subjects, I think, Ira. Oh, absolutely. Um, we can talk about that maybe a little bit later. There's confidence, you know, in all aspects of confidence, your confidence um, in yourself, your self-confidence, your confidence in the relationships that you're building. And if you don't have that confidence, I would strongly recommend, you know, re-examining, you know, why you're still maintaining those relationships. And then your overall confidence 
you know, out with the world. Again, what's your viewpoint? Are you seeing opportunities? Are you seeing, you know, hardship and, uh, you know, only the setbacks and the adverse kind of effects that, that any of us can, of course, feel sometimes. There's enthusiasm, which is one of my personal favorites because I think it just lights up this, you know, inner fire that we all have inside of us. And when you're enthusiastic about things and you share that enthusiasm with others, especially if you're in a leadership position, I think it's hugely um, effective. There's mental flexibility, super, super important. One of my favorite <laughs> skills as well, you know, of not only just being able to switch between ideas, but being able to understand that several things can be true at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. that we do. We live in a world of paradox. Um, different viewpoints create different truths. And it's so important uh, to be able to acknowledge that today. Uh, there's acceptance. And again, all notions of that, self-acceptance, acceptance of others and where they are and how they're looking out uh, into the world, acceptance of external situations. And there's competition. Um, which I love because, you know, being a student really of dialectic thought, and these are, you know, communication techniques that were first, you know, observed and formalized from the Greeks. This is something that I studied all the way back when I was at Northwestern. And this is, you know, these were my first subjects in terms of coaching uh, top executives in Europe and then afterwards in, in the U.S. Um, and certainly when you look through this kind of dialectic lens, uh, you notice the importance of competition because competition is what helps to bring out and up uh, the very best ideas. Um, very strong link also back to uh, the skill of creativity. So that's... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I love how you, you did that and just a couple things. And again, just showing our kind of how, how we're synced and and this is probably the the first one on one conversation we've been in groups before with that. Um, but uh, during the pandemic, when really dug into all this, I talked about cur. I, I you know it was about hope. How how do we get hope at, out of this? How how do we get people to be a little bit more optimistic and and, and see um, you know a future that was worth living? Yeah. And we, we talked about what were the steps and I talked about courage. The first thing you need to do is have the courage to take the first step. And if you practice that, if you do it over and over again, now you build the confidence and the more confident you come, the more hopeful you'll become, uh, which fit into the growth mindset. So although <laughs> are the order in which you're doing it, um, it's, it, there's a theme and and there's a, there's a commonality of this. And it certainly makes sense before we go before we lose track of time, let's go into, okay, now we've, we've got our roots and now we're, we're, we're more comfortable with it. We're accelerating, we're moving forward. And then how do we navigate? Okay, how do we navigate? Yeah. So navigation, same idea, six skills. Um, there's the capacity to persevere, perseverance. Um, there's prioritization and reprioritization. And this is one of my favorites because I think it's something that's so easy to kind of fix and to improve once you realize how important it is. And so this can be something as simple as, you know, you have a jam packed day and, you know, at 11, it changes and then at one, it changes and at five, it changes. Right. And, you know, how are you kind of very comfortable and mentally flexible uh, with rearranging those priorities? I think it, it's really one of the top skill sets that that people can focus on today. There's being pragmatic, you know, as opposed to being an idealist, which is super important as well. But, you know, it's today, if you want to navigate and just do it, sometimes just focusing on the essentials, being pragmatic, accepting something that's good enough to start, which is, you know, goes back to what you said right before, Ira, it's so important. Collaboration, uh, you know, I think this is a theme that so many of us you know, really get a sense of the importance of uh, the, the famous quotation, you know, alone you can go faster, but together you can go further. Uh, I think it's, you know, really never yeah, been absolutely. as true as, as it is today. And I think that will become even more the case as, as we go further into the complexities, you know, of, of tomorrow's world. And then there's learning and growing. Um, you know, we're always learning, we're always growing. And I think when you really get a sense of that, 
it opens up so many doors and it opens up, you know, you talk so much about the growth mindset, learning and growing clearly <laughs> are linked um, to that. But it just also, it, it kind of takes some of the pressure off. It takes that edge off mm -hmm. to get it perfect the first time or, you know, to be a rock star right away with something. And it just lets you get comfortable that every single day, really every single instant of your life, um, you are learning, you are growing, you are, you know, moving at all times. Your body does it without you realizing, you know, it's cellular regeneration. All of our bodies, every single cell, we have a new cell, be it in your bones, your brain, your skin, wherever you want your eyes. Um, you know, we're totally redone uh, every 90 days. So this is something that your body does organically without you even being the slightest bit aware of it. Um, and I think it's important to realize that we really have this capacity much more intentionally and consciously to be consistently learning and growing. And then I kind of close the book off and this whole section on navigation with the importance of slowing down. Um, because it's <laughs> it's easy to hear and to misinterpret, you know, get rooted, then you can accelerate, then you can navigate, you know, and again, it's not, we all have our frenetic days and moments and so on and so forth. But the idea is to, you know, start to work toward a sense of inner peace. And that means different things for every single person. Um, but learning how to, you know, take a step back, take a break. Uh, you know, if it's going to the beach uh, or if it's going to the gym or if it's just sitting down and having a coffee with a really good friend or for people who meditate, whatever, you know, way works for you um, is a great way. <laughs> yeah. So slowing down is is important. We um, we're about 42 minutes into this and um, it, it always goes incredibly fast. And I'm thinking here we could probably spend an entire episode on each of your 18 skills. <laughs> uh, and, and so you're welcome to come back anytime. Okay. But before we kind of start to wrap things up, uh, we came, we, we were connected through the adaptability quotient, the AQAI community. Um, where does this, and I know adaptability is one of yeah. those 18 skills, but yeah. it's much broader than that because we talk about, you, you talk about mental flexibility, you talk about hope, but we talk about grit and resilience and, and unlearning and, and you, you, you touched on that a little bit, uh, growth mindset. Um, where does that fit into your world? I mean, what, what was that connection that you saw uh, and where does it fit into to this? Yeah, I love that question because it was such a strong connection. So I met Ross Thornley, who is, you know, one of the, the founders. Of course, we both know Ross very well. I met Ross Thornley a few years ago during a, an Abundance, Abundance 360 summit. And we just kind of, I mean, it was one of those moments where we just gravitated to each other. You know, I don't know if he saw me first, if I saw him first, but we were both kind of like, listen. <laughs> Yeah. We need to talk. And, you know, and it started um, like that because, you know, at, at CA Consulting Group, we've worked with adaptability and notions of adaptability uh, and certainly a lot of those adaptability skill subsets for, you know, forever, I'd like to right. say. And, you know, here's Ross, you know, with his partner, Mike, um, you know, and they had founded this beautiful company, which is still, to, you know, beautiful growing company right. um, all around the adaptability quotient. So it just, it, you know, was one of those situations where you think I'm so happy to have met this new partner. Um, we're so aligned, you know, in our thinking, you know, with what we do at CA Consulting Group is design programs around an inspiring learning practicing format. That's how we get, mm -hmm. you know, soft skills to really stick. And what Ross and Mike have created, you know, is this amazing model and way to analyze, well, how is your adaptability quotient doing? So, you know, those between right. our pedagogical method um, and Ross and Mike's, you know, research and analysis and, and model, it just really fit. Uh, and our coaches love these tools and our clients love these tools. And we do a lot, you know, of work with with adaptability. And it certainly 
resonates so much for me. Now, in Dancing with Chaos, I talk about it, I break it down a little bit differently because that's what, you know, made sense for me in terms of getting this mm -hmm. message across. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, so many of us are are really trying to emphasize the importance of of similar skills and of a similar mindset. Yeah, and I think what's important with that, and I, and and real quickly, when I was at the Everywhere Work, I had an opportunity for the first time in person. Although we, we've talked and we've spoken many times, he's been on the show, um, but I, I spoke with the CEO of Avanti, and he, he, Jeff gave a keynote. Uh, and he talked about the future everywhere work and future work in the direction of Avanti, but they talked about the need for adaptability. Yeah. And then Sam Rad, uh, her, her full name, Samantha Redacchio, uh, but Sam Rad, who's a, who's a futurist, uh, her whole message was very similar to what we were talking about today. And she's talking about the need for adaptability. And then um, the, the uh, C, uh, I, I forget what his exact title is, uh, but he came up and talked about all the product and was going and talked about the need for adaptability. So when I got the chance to talk to Jeff, I said, you know, you're talking about this, but how do you measure the success? How, how do you measure adaptability? How do you measure if people are actually moving quickly enough and what's going to impact that? But isn't that? It's not just about are people adaptable, but is the culture, uh, uh, yes. does, it, does it create an environment that allows that acceleration does it Absolutely. maybe you, you have the maybe people have the foundations but they don't there you don't allow them to accelerate as they should or navigate as they yeah. should um which fits into that so uh, i encourage everybody if, if you is aq is not the solution it's just a metric it's a measure of of how adaptive is your culture how ready is your, your culture for, for the pace of change that's coming? And how do you prepare the people for that? Which also, Carla, you do you even break it down further with the 18 skills. And, and obviously, I, I've already made that connection of how <laughs> your model fits in. And, yeah. and so we'll, we'll have fun with that. Um, before we talk through the end, uh, I do want to real quickly ask you a couple questions, real quick answers um, to get to know you a little bit. So we call this the lightning round. Uh, this is is, is probably, probably almost a layup for you. Um, when you need to just get enthusiastic, as you said, <laughs> or lay back a little bit, what what's your favorite music or band? Who who do you go to? What do you turn on? Yeah, I love music. Let me just say this is the first year in a number of years that I am unfortunately missing Jazz Fest in New Orleans this year, but that's okay. Um, I'm a huge music person. I love, you know, I love Fleetwood Mac. Um, I know it's an old we just name got tickets for to kind of throw out there, but I, I love them. And we just got tickets for Stevie Nicks concert oh my God. next month, two cool. months. Yeah. Love it. Love it. You know, yeah. and I love all of those kind of local New Orleans funk bands and the blues bands and just that whole galactic, um, all that mix. I love hip hop. There really isn't a form of music that I don't love. And it does. Music makes me feel energized. It makes me feel enthusiastic. Uh, it goes back to my dancing roots. Um, so, yeah. If, if there was one person that you could meet, past or present, who would it be? Oh, hard question, Ira. I would have to say... Um, somebody who's always had a special importance in my life, in part because we're born on the same day, uh, is there are two of them born on the same day. One is Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and the other is Moliere. And so, you know, having grown up in a family that really placed such deep importance way before it became fashionable uh, to do so, um, you know, on diversity and equity and equality, um, certainly Martin Luther King, who we all, you know, look up to, I think in a way that always really resonated with me just because we're born also on the same day. Uh, and the same thing with Moliere. I studied theater. I love farce. I love fast moving comedy i live in you know i've lived in france for the past 30 right. years so those are those are the two okay. carly we can we can talk forever but we literally are out of time um what's the best way we've been scrolling the bar across um uh the screen 
Um, but tell people who are listening to this, what's the best way to get in touch with you? How do they get your book? They can get the book on Amazon. Um, if you kind of Google or Amazon Dancing with Chaos, you will wind up on the books page. You can get in touch with me or anybody at CA Consulting Group uh, through the link that I think was going, the URL that was going by, which is CA Consulting, all uh, attached, and then the small little dash group.com. We would love to hear from you. Um, try Genie. There's a link to Genie on both the company site and also the book site, which is dancingwithchaosbook.com. She is just a lot of fun and really, really helpful. I connect with you on LinkedIn as well. And yeah, LinkedIn. reach out. We'll put all, we'll put all those links in the show notes. Uh, Carly, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. I appreciate you being here today. Uh, and again, hopefully you'll come back because we got so much more you <laughs> know, to talk that. about. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to Geek Skeezers and Googleization today. Thank you for being part of Googleization Nation. Uh, I want to thank uh, Avanti for being our sponsor. Uh, please go to the Avanti.com or GeekSkeezersGoogleization.com site uh, where you can download the 2024 Everywhere Work Report. It is fascinating, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that. And until next week, don't let the shift hit your plans. Thanks for watching Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization. Be sure to listen to the podcast and follow us on YouTube. This show was produced and edited by Hilton Productions.